Howdy, and welcome back. You know, getting thrown into jail isn't something you should really want to cross off the Texas bucket list, but visiting an old one that will lock up your imagination is always a good verdict. So we booked into Gonzales to get a good look as to why the pokey ain't the place for us, especially when it comes to ghostly visitors. Smack dab in the middle of the city, where the Texas Revolution started, sits the Gonzales County Jail Museum. Built in 1885, only 49 years after Texas won its independence from Mexico, it's seen its share of outlaws, banditos, and bad guys over the years. A lot of the townspeople were not happy though because they said it's like putting a $50 saddle on a $15 horse and they didn't want to pay for it. Sandra Wolf has a passion for this old prison. I know jails are not everybody's uh, forte. She knows the history of this old gray bar hotel because she has a special connection to it. This is where I grew up. This was your house? This was my house. This was originally designated as the sheriff's living quarters. Uh, my dad was sheriff for 18 years, and I grew up here. Moved in here when I was six years old. Stayed here till I was 16, and I haven't done anything bad yet. <laughs> 10 years in jail will do that to 10 you. 10 years in jail, yeah. I loved it. I loved it. I actually thought that I moved from the middle of the country to a three-story mansion in the middle of town. So, I mean, I was psyched. I was happy. <laughs> Sheriff McGinty came from a long line of lawmen that led the long arm of the law in this little town. But when the jail was built here all those years ago, some thought Gonzalez might get as big as San Antonio, hence the reason such a big, big house was built. Famed architect Eugene Heiner designed the jail that wasn't closed till 1975. The names of those who spent time here still tell their stories on the wall and a grim reminder of what capital punishment used to be like still stands in the jail. So am I the only one that sees the uh, elephant in the room here? Uh, no, that's the first question everybody asks. <laughs> <laughs> the gallows was actually stored there out of sight. Oh, that was out of sight. That's out of sight. Sure. Don't worry about that Can't over there. It. Only three executions ever took place here, all before 1924. But for some reason, you still get the heebie-jeebies here. So what's behind door number one? This is a surprise. This is really high security. You've got locked doors everywhere. If you get put back here, you're not getting out. Yeah. People who were put in this section uh, committed felony crimes. That's uh, armed robbery, murder, right, bad crimes. People that hurt other people get put in these cells right here. While sitting in these old cells, you can't help but feel the hair on the back of your neck start to rise. We actually have people get a little creepy feeling in here. And a lot of people that visit the jail can't even walk up the stairs. Really? They say they're very sensitive and they said it's just an oppressive feeling. And some of them really leave when they get to the top of the stairs and see all the cells. Perhaps the most intriguing ghost story took place a few years ago in these very cells. We've done lots of paranormal investigations and we've heard whistles and footsteps and seen orbs and all the, all the regular kinds of things that you see when you do that. Uh, but we really had a spectacular viewing, I guess I'd call it. A 17-year-old young man came upstairs. His mother stayed in this big runaround area and he went into the security section. And in the very back cell, which is very small and you can tell if there's anybody else there right away, he went in there, he was by himself. He saw the outline of a left hand on the wall. He put his hand in that and immediately got this feeling down his back that he wasn't alone. So he turned around and right close to him was a kind of a smallish man who had on a blue shirt. He had a scraggly beard and he had bruises on his neck. Uh, it scared the young man and so he got out of that and since it was the last of three cells, he had a little way to go to get out of that cell block. So as he's coming through the last cell, that same man that he just saw appeared on the bunk as he's going out the door. The young man uh, left the jail and would not come back in. His mother eventually came back in and said, I I'm sorry if that was an inconvenience or if it upset anybody, but he is an empath and he sees dead people. And uh, he saw him, whoever him was. Considering I'm into history more than horror stories, we said our goodbyes to anyone from beyond. <laughs> 
Okay, well, I've spent enough time in jail. You, you think you've had enough time? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. You've rethought everything. I've, All I've, right. I've served my sentence. <laughs> this is off my bucket list. <laughs> Actually, I have never ever been afraid in this building. I was always surrounded by deputies and, and actually I usually knew most of the people that were in jail. <laughs> this old jail is more than a former lockup. It's the story of Texas justice with connections to legendary lawmen and a few well-known fugitives. Perhaps even a poltergeist or two, making it well worth a stop on the Texas bucket list. I do feel a presence. It's not like as it's not like a ghost presence or anything like that. It's just like, you know, history's whispering to me or something. And uh, I, I just feel like this is what I need to do.